Hello students, this is KV Ramana, lecturer of Zoology. Today we are going to talk about one of the important event that is about transportation of carbon dioxide. Basically, carbon dioxide transportation is occurring three ways. One is in the form of a physical solution. What is the carbon dioxide will be produced? There is a 5 to 7 percentage of carbon dioxide will go along with the physical solution that is nothing but in the liquid plasma it can be dissolved and it can reach us to the uh, pulmonary or it can reach us to the pulmonary capillaries and diffusion occurs right and second step which is we can call as a bicarbonate ions right so maximum most of the carbon dioxide is transported in the form of a bicarbonate ions and rest of that is a 20 to 25 percentage of carbon dioxide can be transported by the hemoglobin that we can call as a carb amino hemoglobin. So, in the last lecture we have completed about how carbon dioxide transported in the form of a physical solution. In this lecture we are going to talk about the second step that we can call as a in the form of bicarbonate ions right. So, as soon as the chemical reactions takes place in the or cellular respiration takes place in the cells the carbon dioxide will be liberated that carbon dioxide first of all it enters into the RBC. So, let us see what happens right. So, carbon dioxide is produced by the tissues it diffuses passively into the bloodstream and passes into the RBC. So, what is the carbon dioxide is liberated from the cells? It diffuses into the interstitial fluid, later it diffuses into the systemic capillaries, after that it diffuses into the RBC, right? So, that why it is diffused, why it is diffuses from the place to place? Because carbon dioxide is a fat soluble gas. So, it can be diffuses from the place to place very passively. That means without using energy, it can be diffuses from the place to place. As well as when the carbon dioxide is enter into the car when the carbon dioxide is entering the RBC immediately the carbon dioxide is react with the water to form the carbonic acid right so to formation of the carbonic acid with help of an enzyme is called carbonic anhydrase so carbonic anhydrase helps to helps to react the carbon dioxide with the water to form the carbonic acid so now this carbonic acid is immediately dissociated into h plus hydrogen ions and hco3 minus that is a bicarbonate ions for this reaction also the carbonic anhydrase is play very important role so here important thing is important thing is <coughs> carbonic anhydrase presence of carbonic anhydrase is a uh, uh, in rbc as well as in the plasma also present that means what are the reactions i said these reactions will be occur in the plasma also but the difference between the reactions in the plasma and rbc is there is a 5000 times faster in the rbc the reactions which are 5000 times faster in the RBC than the plasma because due to presence of more more concentrated the enzyme is called carbonic anhydrase presence of carbonic anhydrase is more in the RBC so the reactions will be complete within the fraction of second what is the carbonic acid it is dissociated into H plus ions and HCO3 minus ions that is nothing but hydrogen ions and it's a bicarbonate ions. Now what is the role of H plus ions in the RBC? Basically this H plus ions are nothing but a protons. We know the protons are nasty molecules which can be react with the it is a highly reactive it can be react with the any substance in our body so that it should be controlled. The H plus ions are controlled by the hemoglobin. So, hemoglobin play very important role in control of the H plus ions. So, not only hemoglobin, some plasma proteins also. The plasma proteins also helps to control the H plus ions. If H plus ion concentration is more in the blood, it leads to acidosis. Due to acidic blood, there is no enzymatic reaction. So, due to lack of this enzymatic reactions, the body functions will be fail. So, that we know these photons are very nasty molecules. These nasty molecules are very highly reactive molecules. These highly reactive molecules may be damage the DNA also or sometime it damage the cell membrane also. So, it should be maintained by the hemoglobin. We know, we know that what is the hydrogen ions released from the carbonic acid. So, what are the hydrogen ions released from the carbonic acid? It is combined with the hemoglobin right so what is the role of this hemoglobin generally 
we know that hemoglobin helps to transportation of the gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide are there any other functions that is mainly it act as a, a buffering protein in our body you know there are many mechanisms are takes place to maintain the body ph in that one of the one of the uh, process is under uh, controlled by the hemoglobin and plasma proteins and hemoglobin act as a buffering uh, proteins in this event we are talking about that how this hemoglobin how this hemoglobin uh, maintain the acid base balance right as soon as the h plus ions are released from the carbonic acid these h plus ions are uh, okay now these h plus ions are bind are bound by the hemoglobin because in the hemoglobin there is a important amino acid that you can call as a histidine okay now this histidine due to presence of histidine histidine has a, a negative charged amino acid right so these positive charges are react with the negative charged amino acids and they can be bound by the bounding of this H plus ions the concentration of body fluids remain in the same that means the concentration in the sense the H plus ions concentration will be decreased can okay, I told you this H plus ions are it, it is a highly reactive so that will be controlled by the hemoglobin right so it's a very important thing regarding the hemoglobin right so as soon as that uh, uh, H plus ions are react with the hemoglobin to form a hemoglobinic acid what is that hemoglobinic acid so now important thing is after dissociation of the carbonic acid into HCO3 minus and H plus ions now this H plus ions are bound by the hemoglobin right I told you the H plus ions are nothing but photons these protons are very nasty molecules it is highly reactive so that to prevent the reactivity some of the you know hemoglobin is a, a polypeptide globin chain is present in the globin chain there are many amino acids are present in that most of the negative charged amino acids are present like histidine it to react with the H plus ions they can be bind it right so now uh, this HCO3 minus ions are coming outside that is we can call as a bicarbonates these bicarbonates are diffuses from the its high concentration to its low concentration through the a special proteins you know a special proteins which helps to send the HCO3 minus ions out of the RBC now there is a problem what is the problem if you see that H plus ions are remain in the RBC HCO3 minus ions are coming out of the RBC there is a electrochemical or neutrality disturbance how it is recollected because H plus ions are retained in the RBC. HCO3 minus that is a negative charge ions are coming out of the RBC. So neutrality of the cell is in the RBC pathologically the positive charges ions are increases in the cell and the negative charge ions are increases in the plasma. To, to compensate that there is a one more process is takes place in the during transportation of carbon dioxide that we can call as a chloride shift or hamburger phenomenon. What is the use of this hamburger phenomenon? Hamburger phenomenon helps to maintain the ionic balance that electrochemical neutrality between plasma and RBC, right? How it is, right? So, in response to chloride ions, so what are the H3O3 ions ions are reaches to the R enter out of the RBC into the plasma? then you know, the chloride ions are entering into the RBC right so in response to chloride ions diffuses from the plasma into RBC what purpose to maintain the electro to maintain the electrochemical neutrality inside the cell and outside of the cell also right this process of the process of exchange of these chloride ions from the plasma into RBC the process of exchange of HCO3 minus ions from the RBC into plasma. You know, this is the anti-portal process. Anti-portal process is nothing but through the single protein, there are two substances are exchanged in the opposite direction. This type of movement is called anti-portal type of movement, right? So it is very useful for maintaining the electrochemical gradient in the RBC as well as 
as well as you know outside of the RBC also that is in the plasma also right at the same time after this chloride ions enters into the RBC canal through the special protein transporters then this chloride ions are react with potassium right sodium ions are react with the potassium to form the potassium chlorides right at the same time what are the HCO3 minus ions are diffuses out of the RBC to react with the sodium to form the right what are the bicarbonates are diffuses out of the RBC react with the sodium to form the sodium bicarbonates these sodium bicarbonates are transported through the venous system to lungs in the lungs what happens we will see that